fine-tune your payload content. As I have mentioned previously, you can come up with your very own content based primarily on the social signals of the top-notch third-party materials you are curating. Put simply, when you are going through your research, you will keep coming across certain pieces of content which get a lot of engagement on social media. These are all the objective indicators you need to understand that you are looking at high-quality, high-demand content. At that point, you can come up with your own version of that content. You can use it as a template, so to speak. Another approach would be to just do curation first. You just take all the high-quality third-party content with great social signals and put them all on auto-publish on your social media accounts. You run this curation campaign for several weeks. Soon enough, you will see a pattern. Eventually, you will see that some of these materials get a lot more engagement than others. At that point, you can then come up with your own version. Personally, I pick my own content using both methods. If I'm in a hurry to get people to sign up to my mailing list, I do the first method. But if I'm unsure about the niche or I'm still trying to feel my way around in terms of understanding my audience, I would stick to the second method. There's really no one right answer. It really all depends on your situation. The great thing about the second method is that you are picking out your original content strategy based on what actually works in terms of your social media accounts. You have to understand that even though high-quality third-party content may have a lot of objective social signals, those signals may have been generated in different contexts. Maybe the original publisher was doing something that you may not be doing. Do you see how this works? Still, you can definitely do the first method if you're in a hurry. But if you have some time to spare, you might want to try the second method. Do curation first, let it run, and then pay attention to your statistics. You should be able to see a pattern. In fact, based on my experience, content that tends to do well often falls within a narrow range of themes. In fact, in some of my campaigns, almost all of the content that got a lot of love from the internet was focused on one question. That's how focused your audience's needs may be. You should pay a lot of attention to the following. Look at the engagement of the content and the click-through. A lot of social media marketers drop the ball at this point. They think that it's all about engagement. I'm telling you, regardless of how many likes, shares, or comments a piece of content gets, if people don't click through, those engagement signals are not worth much. Remember, at the end of the day, you want traffic. That's the whole reason why you're doing this in the first place. Getting caught up in how many shares, likes, or comments you get is not going to do you any good. You have to always pay attention to the click-through. There has to be some sort of ratio between total engagement and click-through. The higher the ratio of the click-through, the more attention you should devote to a piece of content. Study high click-through and high engagement content closely. Now that you have identified curated content that performs well, the next step is to analyze them with a fine-tooth comb. Ask yourself, what problems are people interested in when they read this piece of content? How are these pieces of content positioned or presented? Do they use some sort of emotional headline? Do they use subheadings that ask questions? Do they drag the person along? Or do they just lay out the information dead center? Pay attention to cosmetic issues. People do judge a book by its cover, and blog posts and articles are no different. How are these materials formatted? Do they have big pictures? Do they have header pictures? Do they use diagrams? What are they doing exactly? Once you've answered all these questions and you're comfortable with the answers you got, the next step is to create your own content specification sheet. This is going to be your template. Now, make sure that you're not just basing it on one successful piece of content. That third-party content might be a fluke. The company behind it might just have gotten lucky, and for some reason, that piece of content went viral. That's not going to help you. You have to base your template on the success of many different pieces of curated content. This way, you can be more confident of the fact that even if you barely comply with all the specifications, you would at least get some decent and positive results. Using the information above, create payload content. Now that you have gotten your template together, you need to create your own high-quality, high-engagement original content. This content is going to be used to sell people on your mailing list. When they read this content, they're supposed to get excited about joining your mailing list. This is content that is most likely to be credible and most likely to be shared. Are you excited? Well, don't get too excited. A lot of people jump in with both feet and they end up sabotaging themselves because the payload content they create looks like an advertisement. That's obvious spam. Nobody's going to trust you with that. You're obviously trying to pull tricks and play games. That's not going to work. Instead, the content must be informative. Think of it as an infomercial. You're selling something that much is obvious, but people have to walk away with solid value. You have to walk that tightrope. 
There's a thin line between shoving stuff down people's throats and providing solid value without asking for anything in return. You have to come up with a decent compromise between the two. The bottom line is, whatever you do, the content you produce must be valuable. It must add value to the lives of people reading your materials. That's how you build credibility. That's how you get people to get excited about your mailing list. Remember, your list is supposed to add value to their lives. It's going to be very hard to give that impression when the content that you share is worthless. I hope you can see that. I'll see you in the next video.